to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In an excellent spirit, even through Babylon, Daniel 5, 12 to 15, then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10, in fact, I'd like us to read Ephesians 3 and verse 10. Let me quote it for time's sake. Paul was speaking to the church in Ephesus and he says to the intent, 3 and 10, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places but might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That means there is a level of wisdom and excellence that need to proceed from the church are we learning a quick recap the first pillar is growth and transformation i didn't give us a scripture for that let's let's do psalm 78 and verse 41 for that point now they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way for them and then philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 psalm 78 41 Philippians 4 and verse 8. Hallelujah. The second is value and productivity. The third is wisdom and excellence. The fourth, are you ready? The fourth pillar that controls influence in our world is wealth and abundance. Hmm. Wealth and abundance. I assure you by God, that for as long as the church does not seem to probe into the subject of wealth and abundance from a kingdom standpoint. Now, I'm not talking about marketing of flesh, materialism, and some of these wrong things. There are, there are many abuses in the body of Christ. I agree. But just because of the presence of something that was mismanaged does not mean we throw the entire baby under the backwater. I can tell you this. When the church becomes poor, we will lose influence. It's as simple and as honest as that. Let me show you a scripture that I hope will bless you. Genesis 42 verse 1 and 2. If we continue to sell the idea that it is comfortable to remain poor and remain in economic bankruptcy, we may be doing ourselves and our children more harm than we know. While there is need to cut away from the overemphasis on money, 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 materialism that has destroyed people today, people have lost integrity completely. I agree. But within the confines of scripture, we must introduce this truth and teach it in a way that empowers believers. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, please look at this scripture very carefully. I don't have a problem with the corn. The problem is the location. Egypt is not where you should go to. Yet, that is where there is corn. Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt. He told his sons, why do you look on one another? Verse 2. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn. Where? Get you down tether. And buy from us from there that we may live and not die. Even a man of God without corn will die. Jacob was a covenant man and death was facing him right before his face because of the absence of corn. Do you know how Israel became slaves in Egypt? This was the journey. The search for corn took them there and when they found out that it was a place of corn, they stayed there till Joseph died and they became slaves. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. Let me repeat. Hunger will always take God's covenant people 
to the place where they should not go. Unfortunately, when Satan wants to attract believers to a life of decadence and decline spiritually, he will manipulate the economy such that only Egypt will have bread. And sooner or later, believers will begin to quietly navigate towards Egypt. And when they go there, they won't buy the bread and go back. Remember, the intention was just to quickly buy and go back. But when you find out that bread is only in Egypt, you stay there. So when we say things like, our children are following wrong men and the rest, are is it? <laughs> it will continue until there is an alternative. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that is the truth. By the time a mother is watching her child die in the hospital, needing 2.5 million for surgery, and you say, don't worry, don't compromise, don't do anything, God will provide. And she's watching her child cry and say, mommy, will you let me die? Let me tell you, pressure has a way of initiating things you never imagined you will do. I have, by reason of what I do, I've had the honor and the privilege to talk to kings, professionals, politicians. I can tell you, many people are intrinsically sincere. Hunger took them to Egypt. Now they became slaves in Egypt for 430 years. And when Moses came to advocate their exodus, you know what happened? Moses stood before Pharaoh, his half-brother, now Ramesses, who had now become the Pharaoh of Egypt, and said, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go. Hear what he said. The people, we are giving them straw for free while they walk. So the remaining time they have, they can use it to serve God. Don't give them straw again. Let them look for it by themselves. And they said, Moses, forget about this, this exodus idea. We are willing to stay as slaves. My Bible says the borrower will always be slave to the lender. So intelligent people, what is another word for a slave? So if the nations want to make slavery out of Africa, how do they make it? Your Bible says it. It says the rich will rule over the poor. I hope you are not misunderstanding what I'm teaching you. It is true. Let me tell you this. The gospel is free, but the means to take it to the lost. I always will say this, that the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up for nations, the nations to see. The dead body of Jesus is hanging on that cross. And no man had the influence to bring it down. Except one man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. Is it in your Bible? He used his influence, his wealth and his relationship to now go to Caesar and say, please release the body. Your salvation required influence to happen. The tomb, he took responsibility. He said, no problem, it is my estate, it's my tomb. I will bury Jesus there. Otherwise, the body of Jesus would have remained on that cross. You would never would have been able to say, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? Because someone of influence participated in redemption. They buried Jesus there and he resurrected by the glory of the Father. The fourth pillar is wealth and abundance. The fifth The fifth pillar, I simply call it the supernatural. Please write it down and I'll explain to you what I mean. The fifth pillar, you want to compel influence, it has to be at the instance of the supernatural. What is the supernatural? Outsourcing results and possibilities beyond this three-dimensional realm. I can tell you that as believers, we have an advantage we can tap into the supplies and the blessings that reside with the heavens and produce results here on earth that is not given unto mere men to produce. This is powerful. They follow Jesus because how do you meet a woman who has been down of fever 
and he simply holds her lovingly and says stand up and it is done I will follow such a man notice that they even wanted to make him king these people were hungry and he multiplied loaf and he said we will make you king immediately whether it's election time or not this level of results we want it can I tell you this I hate to say this but it is unfortunate you will so be surprised at how many believers still patronize native doctors I don't mean in disguise direct native doctors you turn back and enter there are many people church goers you know why because before they got born again that was what was there and it seemed to have some results the man will give a charm and make concoction and you will find out that people are coming to buy the products now you tell them throw away that charm and he threw it away and find out that he was suffering his life became miserable one day he will go back and say sir I don't know if you are still available let me share with you a story am I boring you true story back then when I was still in Zaria one woman true story now I used to have counseling sessions and the woman came with her daughter and she said she needed a child so desperately something began to happen in the life of the girl and she was almost it was becoming a psychosomatic condition and so true story now she came and said that um, she needed to confess something I said what is it madam and she said because of she she had to stay long not having a child and you know people started suggesting do this there's somebody is not exactly bad and so on and so forth she landed herself by the river and met this man and cried and said I need a child I'm tired of this and the man said that's all right I will give you that child but here is the condition true story that when that child becomes 20 years on the dot bring that child back to this place there is a sacrifice that must be done failure to do so everything will start going haywire and out of desperation said no she said but you are an old man you will be dead by then and she said he pointed a young boy who was playing around and said this boy will be the one seated here satan has a program for continuity by the time that lady became 20 years on the dot everything started falling apart in her life and she didn't know what was happening and so she came to her mother you know a lady talking to her mother and said mommy I don't know what is happening and the mom kept quiet and so she went to counsel with some women and some said let's pray some women said you better run run to that place quickly and so they decided to come to me and I said my God look at this now you will see such an innocent person and feel that this person is very innocent you are right except that it will take the power of God to correct that anomaly there are many homes today that are a product of this thing there are many lives today there are many territories no wonder you find out that there are territories where the gospel does not seem to thrive you get there missionaries will tell you you get there you love the Lord one week two weeks something would happen and you would have to leave that territory it takes the supernatural to compel and to bring influence when Jesus came and they started seeing possibilities that were not affordable as far as the world of men were concerned they started to follow him anyone who walks with these five pillars must become an individual of influence growth and transformation sustaining superior belief systems number two value and productivity that you become productive always number three wisdom and excellence number four wealth and abundance number five the supernatural let me wrap up by touching on the last subtopic the geography of witness Micah chapter 4 please verse 1 and 2 blessed be the name of the Lord Micah chapter 4 
But in the last days, it shall come to pass that Equa Plateau Church shall be established in the top of the mountains. And it shall be exalted above the hills. And all people shall flow to it. Verse 2. Many nations will come. Very soon we'll stop going. Something God is doing in our midst. Was it not John Wesley that said, set yourself on fire and the nations will come to watch you burn. And let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways. In 1972, as you know, there were two great generals of the gospel. One of them, Lauren Cunningham, you know him. Youth with a mission. The other one was Bill Bright, the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ. Both of them went to bed and they woke up with the same dream. In that dream, they saw seven mountains. And that these mountains, they were told, were the spheres of influence that control and shape culture. Please, you have to listen to this as I wrap up. And from this, they came up with the concept that has come to be known in the body of Christ today as the seven mountain concept. The Bible says that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains. That is influence. It was a prophetic revelation of what would happen before Christ comes. That suddenly the church of Christ will gain such dominance and influence and will now begin to rise above all other mountains. Now mountains in scripture don't just talk of obstacles alone. Mountains in scripture talk of spheres of influence or mind control systems. Hallelujah. That these are the mountains that shape culture. Every one of us here, every church on the plateau, every individual on the plateau and across this nation is under the influence of one or more of these mountains. If the purposes of Christ would be preserved, it would be through allowing Jesus and his purposes to penetrate through these mountains. One more scripture and then I'll discuss them and then we'll pray. Mark 16, 15. Mark 16, 15. Please let's read it together if you can see it. Ready? One, two, read. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Please leave that scripture there. Let's read it one more time. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. Hallelujah. We're intelligent people. Now let's look very carefully. He told them, go ye into. He never said, go around. That means, in as much as evangelism is powerful, there was something he was saying. Go ye into. If I say, go into a room, what do I mean? To enter and be submerged there. Enter the system. And then he uses all the world. Why did he add all there? How many walls do we have? A logical statement to be go to the world, but he says all the world. It means he was speaking of something else. Go ye into these systems and spheres of influence and when you get there, become an advocate of the purposes of God and ensure that every creature, not every man, Every creature benefits from your influence. This is the mandate Jesus gave us. More than just going around to talk to people, he says, enter the system, all the world. And when you get there, your assignment is not just to do business. Your assignment is not just to be a professor, respectfully speaking. Your assignment is not just to be a parent. 
he says enter the system let me list for you the seven mountains in every society these fairs of influence are the shapers and the molders of every civilization the shapers and the molders of the ideologies in any and every society there are seven of them are you ready the first sphere of influence that controls men and their activities on earth is the mountain of religion please write it down the mountain of religion this is the sphere of influence that shapes the spiritual conviction of people across a territory everybody in a territory believes something even an atheist who does not believe anything believes himself hallelujah can I tell you this God must find men and women represented in this mountain this is where preachers come in the fivefold apostles and prophets when people get a wrong ideology it largely came from the pulpit Sunday after Sunday in Nigeria we have services somewhere almost every day is that true there is a conference a convention a bible study a program a prayer meeting a night vigil our churches are full of people who submit themselves without restraint to be mentored spiritually if their spiritual convictions are wrong it means that something wrong is coming from the pulpit the mountain of religion it was because Samuel was properly mentored by Eli. That was why he was able to rise even though Eli, the later part of his life, couldn't, you know, things went wrong. But we must give him the credit that he mentored Samuel. When God spoke to Samuel, he used the voice of Eli. So God will speak to you using the voice of your preacher. The sermons you hear every day. It means we must pray that God will send quality men to our pulpits. Let Satan not train rubbish and send nonsense to mount our pulpits. I say this respectfully speaking. Otherwise, there will be trouble in the next five, ten years. Let me tell you something with Satan. When he finds out that he is unable to capture a generation because of their unbending loyalty, he will let them be and be patient while he prepares for the next generation. This is the tragedy of the West today. In the 60s and the 70s, most of these places you see today that have become a, a place of apology in the West, they were places of fire. These missionaries and evangelists and men and women of God, you read them, God's generals, all of these mighty people, but they made a mistake. And I pray we don't make it. They were concentrating on advancing the kingdom and forgot their future. They left their children behind. That was what Pharaoh told Moses. We will allow you go. Let the men go. But the children will stay behind. Moses said, no way. We are all going. We can't keep our future behind. When Satan cannot fight you, he will give up on you. But you will now come and grow with your future. Let me tell you this. Whoever shapes the mind of the children while they grow is the person they will be loyal to when they grow. You cannot appear into the future and the adulthood of anyone and claim a stake in their destiny. No. No. It is the reason why we must invest and we must commit to training the children and Sunday school is not a weak ministry. That is what gives guarantee to the continuity of Equa Plateau Church. Hallelujah. So when Satan found out that some of those black Americans and those preachers would not give up and would serve Jesus unto death, he gave up on that generation and came back and met their children who were at home, unattended to by the busy parents who were preaching the gospel. And he said, you know what, I will grow with you. Those little children today are the presidents of nations. The person who trained them while they were growing is the one they will be loyal to now that they are grown. Not to sound condemning, 
but I am amazed at the level of enlightenment of this generation of our children coming up. They will ask you questions that you cannot sleep. As a small child, my teacher said, many of us are, I'm coming to family, but many of us have ignored this. Let me tell you the truth. Don't just think of where you are. You must think of the next 10 years, the next 20 years. Equa Plateau Church, do not ignore the youth and the children. Whether we like it or not, our parents and even us, if Christ tarries, we will all be gone one day. It's not bad news, except if you are not born again. We will be gone. It's the reason why businesses don't last. I don't know any business that is up to 150 years old in Africa. We do not think succession. No. You go to Europe, you will see houses 200 years old. You will see businesses 500 years old, 400 years old. Because they built within it in the system the, a principle for continuity. But many times in our nation and our region, anything that lasts 10 years is old enough to die. religion. As I mentioned this, this becomes our prayer point even for this conference. Lord raise pastors, raise missionaries, people of integrity and people who love Jesus. People who will love Jesus more than money, Jesus more than fame, Jesus more than ministry, Jesus more than titles. We should not just wish it, we must pray it and trust God to raise people. Number two, family. The second sphere of influence that is responsible for shaping the mindsets of people. Family is very important. Hallelujah. Isn't it amazing that as a man of God, when you are counseling people and they tell you they want to get married, you have to verify whether the person they are marrying is of the opposite sex. Whoever, whoever imagined that that would need to happen in the church. Are you marrying a male or a female? It's terrible. Very terrible. Go and read about the Tower of Babel and Sodom and Gomorrah. What brought them to decadence? Do you know that there are places when you go today even to preach, there are things you cannot say. They will jail you. There are restrooms that they are, right now there are court cases happening simply because they designated the restroom male and female. And people say I should have the liberty to enter anyone depending on what I choose to be at that time. And can I tell you, don't think it's far from Nigeria. You will be surprised to know how many people are embracing these ideologies. There are fundings that never happen to institutions and organizations until they agree and accept that they will not fight any, you know, some kind of things. Every armed robber came from a family. Is that true? Every one of these Boko Haram people was born. Can I tell you, every national problem was first a regional problem that was not attended to. Every regional problem was first a community problem that was neglected. And if you keep reducing it, it will end in a family problem that was ignored. I don't believe in abusing children. I don't believe in all of this. But let me tell you the truth. We have to be careful, respectfully speaking, especially with our idea of love. Because what many parents are calling love is a recipe for disaster and destruction. I will apologize at the end of my message, but just allow me to finish. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to be careful. When we were growing up, there were certain disciplines, whether in Sunday school or it was in secular school or home. There were now you come and meet a small child and he cannot say good morning. He can even be putting his hand in your pocket and remove everything there and run. Oh, come on, please. Something is really wrong. If that person becomes your president, he will do exactly what he's doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Family. The first revelation of Jesus that children should see is as displayed by daddy and mommy. 
That is the first revelation of Jesus. If all that the boy sees is abuse and irresponsibility, even if he does not like it, that is the only mindset he has. He will become it inevitably. Hallelujah. God must help us. And there are people here that God is raising and granting that ministry to help families. Please don't give up. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God lift people who can help correct these mindsets. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, very quickly, our time is gone. I have to end. Government and politics. The third mountain that shapes and controls the mindset of people is the mountain of politics and government. Someone was asking me a question and he said, what is my opinion about the Nigerian politics? I said, next question, please. <laughs> Ask me the next question because I'm not sure that you are ready. I don't, I'm on air. I don't want to, my perspectives, you see, maybe my perspectives, I'm used to being controversial. My perspectives are usually somewhat disturbing. You cannot select who you want and then ask me to choose any one of them. No. That's not liberty. It's as simple as that. Hallelujah. God has to help us. One policy set by the devil through the guise of the parliament or government of and politics can shut the church regardless of our prayer and rolling on the ground. One person, go and read your Bible in the book of Daniel. When Daniel was praying unto God, it was affecting the spirits of the Medes and the Persians and they had to come through politics to enact. They didn't say we are attacking Daniel. That would be too direct. But they came and, and they, they agreed on a vote and they said for 30 days, I pray that a day will not come when they would have to censor the church and send sermons from maybe a federal registry so you receive yours by text to preach. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. A particular broadcasting station approached me some years ago and they wanted to put my programs there. And when I had a discussion with them, I love them, I don't condemn them, but I was terribly disappointed at the conditions and the things they were putting. I said, if I do this this way, will I be able to go to bed? No. I said, no, I'm grateful. God bless you, but this is not it. We must trust God for grace. There are some of you who are called into politics. It's not just enough to pray. We must obtain grace. But let me tell you, many politicians are not very serious with God. That's the reason why when they get there, because in politics, you have to be in direct fraternity with the realm of the spirit. Either towards God or some kind of diabolic thing. Politics will stop you from being neutral. You know the number of Muslims that come to me for prayers, especially during election. They don't care. They mix anything and they hope one will work. At least they are honest. While they are crying to you, there is some charm somewhere, there is another thing somewhere, they just know one of them will work. And they come, once they hear you have results, you say in Jesus, you will be surprised, they kneel down, they watch TV, they are not stupid people. Can I tell you this? We don't have the time. I'm sorry for stretching you. But if you ever want to get into politics, you must be able to find a system where priesthood backs you. The formation of king, priest, prophet is a tripartite formation that must never be compromised if you want to do well in government. The reason is that politicians just believe I am a Christian. No, it takes more than being a Christian. There has to be priesthood backing you. Unbelievers know this. Forget the things that you see on TV. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. You will be surprised at the sacrifices. That is why they have confidence regardless your opinion. Their confidence is outsourced from a realm. 
that is not earthly. May God grant us grace to have politicians like Daniel who will be uncompromising and yet will make impact, maximum impact. May God raise even within the plateau in this year and the years that come people across the various tiers of government. It's painful and it's unfortunate and I say this respectfully so to know that our students have been kept this long at home. I know you are sad, it's unfortunate. There are contemporaries, respectfully speaking, in private universities and abroad have long gone. And you will say life should be equal. It, it won't be, they won't balance like that. It will take favor and the grace of God. By the time the gentleman is graduating, he has passed the age for employment. Number four, education. I think I've said that already. Let's just pray that God will raise people. Imagine a professor who is born again, spirit filled with understanding. You can look at a student and know that this student is not just failing because he is dull. There is something more. And you can lock your office and say, gentlemen, I know that I teach you in class. I'm a professor, but I'm a witness too. Let us pray. And that one prayer right there, the day that student is returning with his certificate. It is true. We must trust God not just for intellectuals, but people who will use the tool of intellect. I don't know if they've changed it, but many years ago, respectfully speaking, the motto of the Corpus, Islamic Corpus, their association, was serving Islam through the nation. Not serving the nation. No, the nation is a tool. That is the mindset that is given to them. We must trust God. And then education, it shapes our minds. I am praying in the name of Jesus that God will raise quality teachers and quality schools. If God is granting you a grace to build a school, please build it. Don't be afraid. Build it with confidence. We need standards. There are people today, respectfully speaking, who would graduate and you would tell them, write a letter. And they are writing it like a text message. You, like you. I am. And you are wondering, and this person graduated with something that is, you understand what I'm saying? 300 and something in jam and they cannot compose themselves to answer an intelligent question. Corruption has just eaten into the educational sector. We have to trust God for grace. May God raise institutions through us. Yeah. Next is media. Media. The word media means a channel, a vista. They will interpret good or evil. We understand good or evil from the lens of media. Did you know that as big and as large as Russia is, they have only one media house? Russia is about a little, uh, a little over half of Africa. And they have only one media house because of the power of media. Media can make you believe anything. An enemy can be a saint through media. A saint can be an enemy through media. Media is a powerful perception control system. Hallelujah. We must trust God for grace. To be able to raise and thank God also for social media. Even though it has its own negative effects. It's produced untold distractions. But if and when it is used properly, you can project Jesus in a way that will surprise you. Who would have known that I'll be standing from one point and you are speaking and everyone, not just seated on a TV, someone with his phone, with a device, anywhere across the globe. That is a powerful tool for evangelism and soul winning. Media is powerful. Let us not allow that space for Satan alone. 
we must occupy that space. God grants you grace to set up a media house, a TV station. Go for it in the name of Jesus. Provided you will do it with integrity. I am praying. Do you know? Let me tell you this. I had a vision many years ago. Before probably the first or second Christian media house came to this nation. And I saw 37 media, Christian media stations. I said, where will this be? And looking at it today, I am amazed to see what God has done. Hallelujah. Number six, art and entertainment. That is the sixth mountain of influence. Art and entertainment. I don't want to talk much here. They control our dressing. They control our speech. They control how we understand and celebrate success. We have to trust God for people to rise to this mountain. This is the mountain that influences young people the most. This is the mountain where celebrities are found. This is the mountain where musicians are found. This is the mountain where sportsmen are found. It's amazing how that someone who has been well cultured for many years in one moment can sit under the influence of one or more of these people and destroy their values completely. We need to trust God to have people in the arts and entertainment that can represent the purposes of God. And then finally, the seventh mountain is the mountain of business and finance. This is the mountain that funds every other mountain. Whoever controls the economic flow controls the loyalty of people within a territory. Have you wondered why there is massive kidnapping going on in this nation? And every time those who are the kidnappers are caught, they will tell you they've never enjoyed even 100,000 from that money. So where did the 10 million go to? Where did the 100 million go to? Because there is a central remittance system. You see that now. They understand the power of economy. This service is happening right here. But I am sure the elders will tell you there was a budget for this conference. We have to trust God for people who are genuinely born again. Who love Jesus with all their hearts. And will be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom. For the sake of his majesty. I made up my mind as a man of God. That I would never teach and raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. I understand the power of economic influence. And I made a commitment that I would teach them the whole counsel of God. To the end that people be empowered. Empowerment is powerful. Hallelujah. I had the honor and the privilege of praying during the thanksgiving of one of the governors when he became a governor. I wasn't supposed to pray for him. I was in a meeting and then I was told he will be coming afterwards and they requested, they said, can I pray for him? I said, fine, that's, that's okay. I saw people in that church that except for the love of Jesus, I should be saying, what are you doing here? Do you know why they came? Because a man of economic means was to be prayed for. There are many people you don't need to invite to church. Just be blessed. They will come. It is true. If you want to speak to people who are seated on that mountain, it will take economic empowerment to be able to communicate the gospel. That is the truth. Because you see, respectfully speaking, wealth comes with pride. So if you are communicating the gospel, you have to sustain some level of economic empowerment for wealthy people to listen to you. Seven mountains. What you call your purpose or your assignment is simply the role that you have to play in one or more of these. You are a witness, but what you call your assignment is simply, this is what I'm leaving with you tonight as we pray. God is counting on you. For some, the mountain of religion, like the preachers. For some, family, education, government, arts, entertainment, 
Now, do you know why I'm saying this? Because there are several people who sense the call of God upon their life. But they think the only way to express the call of God is to be a man of God. It's a narrative that has been sold. And there are many people who are holding the mic today who should not be in fivefold meaning. They were only craving for an expression. And since they were told the only way to do ministry is to become a man of God, we have people who clearly you will know that this is not their assignment. But if everyone is now told that you can find expression right where you are, this is very powerful. We are going to pray. This is kingdom advance. Let me define it now and then we pray. What then is kingdom advance? Kingdom advancement refers to Any and every scriptural means. Kingdom advance refers to any and every scriptural means deployed. Any and every scriptural means deployed to enthrone Christ and his purposes in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities. Kingdom advancement refers to every and any scriptural means deployed to advance Jesus Christ and his purposes to enthrone Jesus Christ and his purposes first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. So the next time you say we are advancing the kingdom. What it means is we will employ every and any scriptural means that can be deployed, provided it will end up enthroning Jesus Christ in the hearts of men, evangelism, and across every strata influence. That is kingdom advance. So whether it is through your offering, through your singing, through your preaching, anything at all that is scriptural and can lead to the enthroning of Jesus Christ is kingdom advance. This is our mandate. The church is only as good as its ability to save sinners and to turn those people to become kingdom ambassadors, witnesses indeed. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.